appreciate you joining us. This is our live Stick With The Plan. Today I will be talking about There's Always Hope. We had so much fun filming this at the park here in Danville. I love the shots that Fabian gets of the water and the fountain. And uh, it's, it's so nice uh, to be outside. We love the weather here. We're in Kentucky today. You know our studio here at Faith Church. And the weather is beautiful here. We have no rain today. We've got the sun out. I hope it's sunny where you are. I'm glad you're hopping on with us. Today's going to be a good one. We are going to stir up hope within us. Pastor Jay may jump on at some time. We're not sure. <laughs> I know he is helping uh, our dear friends in Mobile where uh, Pastor Joel Grantham went on to heaven and my dear friend Mickey, his wife and their four children are there. And she texted me last night and said, um, I was telling her I wish I could be with her. And she said, Amy, uh, Jay is here and he had my whole family laughing last night and that is the best medicine. And I thought, wow, um, it's true. Laughter is the best medicine no matter what you're going through. If you can laugh or or, or find uh, something to get happy about. Uh, I know uh, the comedian Mike Myers said this when he was growing up. Uh, his dad, uh, they were broken down on the side of the road and they were in London, England and his dad uh, had a car load of kids and Mike said he was one of the kids in the back seat and his dad was fixing everything and couldn't get this car started. And he looked back at the kids in the back seat and said, how soon can we laugh at this? <laughs> Meaning the sooner you can laugh about something, even the darkest situations, find a little laughter. It'll help you get through it. Today I'm talking about hope and I'm glad you're with me. There's always hope. Amen. Hey, Lena's on. Lena, we got your husband, David, in the house helping me on the sound. We sound better every week and we're thankful. David, thank you. And Fabian's in the house with me. I do have a special guest too. My brother, Matt's in the house. Uh, Matthew Bailey. Woo -woo -woo. He said he's not camera ready. If I had like a... Another shot, a field camera. <laughs> I'd put it right on him. Uh, so I, I have an audience today in the house. Um, Matt's going to be joining us this week. We minister in Naples, Florida. So we scooped up my brother Matt and said, you got to come with us. So so we'll be there. Um, I'll be there Sunday morning. If you're in uh, the Naples area, come and see me at Faith Church. If you're here in Kentucky, you need to be right here. Pastor Jay will be here Sunday morning preaching. And we had a time. Last Sunday, we um, got to preach uh, here in Kentucky, and we saw miracles, and uh, I love what God is doing here. I People ask me, how's Danville doing? How's your church? I always say, Danville's on fire. You feel the presence of God every time you get in here, and I love when we get to meet. Uh, Marilyn Majors is on. She was with me Sunday morning here, and we got to pray after church just Felt the Holy Spirit just did a work in Marilyn's life, and she's just praying so beautiful in the Holy Spirit. It just blessed me, Marilyn. Um, Sheila Clark's on with us. It's good to see you, Sheila. Thank you all for jumping on and for sharing this. Um, I, I love your help because you share it. New people get to watch this, and we are going to have a lot of fun today. I'm talking about there's always hope. I just told the crew here, it's hard for me because I've ended one notebook and I'm going to a new one. And all my sermons and all the stick of the plans are in this one. And I got to break out and do a new one. So um, so I've got a little notes in, in the new one and a little notes in the old one. But uh, today there is just always hope. Praise the Lord. Tiffany's on saying good morning. Good to see you, Tiffany. I, uh, I'll just start us off with this um, uh, chapter and verse out of Hebrews. This is six. You know this one um, very well. We'll jump over to verse 19. It says, this hope we have as an anchor of our soul, both sure and steadfast and which enters the presence behind the veil. I like this because we do have hope in something greater than just us. And it makes us steadfast. It makes us secure and gets us behind the veil right into the presence of God. When I was talking to the Lord about this. He really said, even behind uh, gets you through your emotions, gets you through uh, all the stress that what you're going through. You can get through all that junk and still get to the presence of God when you have hope. Isn't it so uh, awful when people say, um, you know, I don't want to get your hopes up. And I think that's so sad. All we have is hope. Come on, tell me something good. Get my hopes up. <laughs> you know, this Bible was written to get our hope 
up, not to keep you down or depressed. No, the Lord gave us his promises so we could stir up hope. You know, when uh, you hear about a bad diagnosis or if you're at the doctor's office and they're like, well, well, I don't want you to get your hopes up. I think, well, if you knew how the spirit realm worked, you'd want to get your hope up. You'd want to put your trust and belief in God. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to stir up hope. Um, I, I like to talk about miracles with you because miracles produce miracles. And uh, Sunday we uh, had some uh, good, I saw some people before church. Um, I got some words of knowledge about people's joints and ankles and, and knees. And when I said that, it, it was neat that people that responded to that, that got to receive that. And then the week before, I thought it'd be fun to show you a little a video of a testimony we have from my friend, Pam, I, I got to lay my hands on her back and she had a great testimony. I thought you might like to see it. Can we roll that now? Yep. Okay, here we go. <laughs> you guys, this is my friend Pam. She has an awesome testimony of healing. Yes, this morning I came to service and I was in so much pain. 20, uh, in 2012, I was hit by an 18-wheeler diesel truck hauling coal, so it was a double load and it messed my whole lower back up and I've been in so much pain for so long. And um, this morning when she was talking about coming up and getting prayed for, she talked about specific things. And I came up and she was praying for me, but then when she laid her hand on my back, all of a sudden it just started hurting so bad. And it was like it was on fire. No. <laughs> I could just feel this pain. I was like, oh God, no, this is not what I wanted. I wanted healing. And so I just started kind of moving around and I just kept claiming it in Jesus' name. I'm healed. I'm healed. And as I began to walk back and sit down, it was just, it, it, it dissipated. I, I mean, the pain literally just lied. And it was like amazing. I told her, I said, I've been healed countless times in my lifetime, but I've never felt that in my life. And so I said, girlfriend's got it. <laughs> Jesus is the healer. Hallelujah. I loved her. You guys, you guys. She said, I laid my hands on her back and she goes, and it hurt worse. The pain was excruciating. <laughs> I thought, I don't know, where is her testimony going? But uh, she felt the power of the Holy Spirit go right into her back. She was hit by that tractor trailer, she said, and I think 2014. And to be in pain for that long and that all you need to do is get in the presence of God. He had healing for her. And when she said she sat back down in her seat and felt the power of the Holy Spirit just remove that pain from her and she testified she came back Sunday night and she wanted me she said Amy you've got to get this testimony so I, I grabbed my camera and said okay come on let's film it let's get your testimony and I love uh, testimonies that just show us how that Jesus is the healer you know I love healing Jay says no matter what I preach about Amy's going to turn it into a healing service <laughs> we we like to we like to make sure that um, we're getting all the benefits of the kingdom hey Beth uses on good to see you my friend um, but we love to see what God is doing. And I thought you would enjoy that testimony. I like to talk about miracles because it seems like once you hear someone else's testimony, it'll inspire your faith that you will just come alive and you'll be able to believe God for what you need. If you're sitting in pain right now today watching the show, we'll believe just by the power of the Holy Spirit, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, it's available to us. It quickens our mortal bodies today, just as he touched Pam in that church service on Sunday, he'll touch you as well. I believe this show is a divine appointment for you where we can expect God to move. Praise the Lord. We can't talk about a good God without him showing up. I just read to you from uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19 about this hope that we have in him. It is an anchor for our soul and it'll keep you steadfast no matter what the storm of life is. The winds may blow, the sea may be trying to toss you back and forth, but yet because of this anchor, you remain steady and firm. I um, well, I said mentioned that my brother Matthew's here in the audience with us, and he's actually been to San Diego. And I I talked to our great uncle Tim about this message, and I messaged him and asked him about the anchor on those naval ships. And I said, you know, I, I want to preach a message about uh, the anchor of our soul. And he told me a couple years ago, he said that anchor on those naval ships is about 30,000 to 40,000 pounds. So um, when you drop that, that whole ship 
fills it. And that ship is like a city. I mean, they get their hair cut there. They have general stores, whatever the, the men need and the women on that crew. Those naval ships are large. Thousands of people are on them. But yet this anchor, I mean, the links are hundreds of pounds a piece. When you drop anchor, they, he, he said that whole ship will begin. To, you'll be able to feel something happening. And, and I believe as we, uh, if that's the anchor, if our hope is like an anchor, I thought when we begin to hope in the Lord, situations that shouldn't be there are going to start to shake just like that ship did. When you drop hope, when you drop anchor, things are going to shake. The, the trouble won't be allowed to stay. It's, um, you know, I've heard it said like this. It's not the trouble that remains always. It doesn't endure always. It's God's love for you that endures forever. It's his mercy that endures forever forever. So when you just say, that, I trust in the Lord, I put my hope in the Lord, you're dropping anchor, even in the middle of that storm. And that whole situation will start shaking a little. You'll feel a little, oh, your kids might think, oh, the house feels funny. What's happening? They can say, oh, it's mom and dad. They're praising God. They're dropping hope right now. <laughs> things are shaking and things are moving. Think about Paul and Silas in uh, Acts chapter 16. And they uh, were locked in the prison. Their hands are bound. Their feet are bound. And all they were doing were preaching in the name of Jesus in the innermost prison in lockdown. And, uh, you know, their backs hurting. They, anybody that could have been pitiful or hopeless or thought, oh, don't get our hopes up. We're in the middle of this jail. Instead of being pitiful or crying, I love this, that hope just started to raise up within them and they began to sing praises. And when they started to sing, they were dropping hope. <laughs> and it says that there was a great earthquake. They were ministering unto God. The jail cells were shaken. Their chains were loose and the doors flew open. It only didn't set them free when they started dropping that hope or raising up that praise. It set them free and everyone in that jail got free. That they even went to the jailer's house and got his whole home born again. I'm saying this hope is powerful that we have in Jesus. It changes things. It'll shake things loose and set you free in your life. We hope in the Lord today. Hallelujah. I'll see. Uh, I'll check in with you. I got preaching and didn't get to say, hey, Cindy, good to see you. Glad you're on. Monica's with us. Hey, Monica, we'll be in, in your town soon. You know, um, Matt and I went to the airport last night. My brother's with me and our flight got canceled. We should be in Naples right now during the show for you all. And uh, they just said there was a mechanical problem. And I, I dropped them off and went around to park. And before I could park, they had already told them there's no, there's no flight tonight. And no flight at all? No, <laughs> they can't get you out at all. So tonight uh, we'll be, uh, Monica, going to uh, Naples tonight. So it'll be fun. Yes. Amen. Oh, yeah. Sheila Clark was with me. She's talking about um, Sunday and the miracle service. Yeah, we did see miracles, Sheila. So fun. I'm glad you brought your neighbor, too. I'm really believing for him. He he got uh, an encounter with the Lord. I believe he'll be hungry and he'll come back next week, too. And he'll get to meet uh, Pastor Jay as well. And it'll be fun. It's good when your neighbors start coming with you, too, and get uh, get a hold of what God's doing. Praise the Lord. Try to keep my hair off my mic so I, I don't do the hair noise again. <laughs> Always tease and say they don't make microphones for girls because you can't, girls can't put the mic pack anywhere and you don't know where to put it on your clothes. You don't get to wear a suit and uh, jacket mostly like the guys do. It makes it easy to clip it on. But I thought I did good Sunday. I had the thing on that hooked onto my ears and all this hair and all I had to do was take off one earring so it didn't click on the <laughs> microphone. So it's kind of like a Mr. Clean look for me. I had one. Want me to lower it down now? Okay. Oh yeah, then, I, then maybe that curl wouldn't touch it. Is that better, David? That side. Okay. Cool. We'll get it right. It'll sound better and better. Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, but I thought, you know, hope is our anchor this morning uh, to our soul, really getting us into the presence of God. It's our connection to the Lord. I thought our first point would be, um, you know, we just said that hope is an anchor. It's going to keep you steady, just like Paul and Silas. You can drop hope, let all the trouble start shaking. Whatever you've been worried about and concerned will start shaking, and uh, you'll get in the presence of God. I was looking in the Word of God. This is the New Living Translation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, in verse 13, it says three things will last forever. And that's our faith, our hope, and love that they'll never be done away with. They're forever. Then the greatest of these of love that we know, but you know, we're not going to 
ah, be able to uh, have great faith if you don't hope in, in God. It all starts with hope. It all starts right there that you are thinking about the world or what's going on. And I have to turn off the news and just listen to your heart and turn up the praise and worship music and say, you know what? Nothing in the natural looks like it's good right now. Nothing has turned yet. Nothing has moved for me, but I, I'm just going to believe God and hope anyway. Uh, you know, when I say that, it always reminds me of Romans 4. I love thinking about um, how Abraham had to hope uh, anyway in the Lord. I have a testimony that comes from uh, our family. Uh, I mentioned that my brother Matt's here. We have an uncle, Greg, our, our mom's brother. And when he was a little boy, uh, he was very sick. He was a baby. He was like 18 months old. And my pap, uh, told me this story, and they were at the hospital. And you might have, you can, uh, you know, comment uh, with me if you're watching. Go ahead and put, there's always hope. There's always hope. No matter how dark the night is, there's always hope. Amen. That's right, Marilyn. Faith, hope, and love. That's what we have. And uh, so this story comes from me uh, years ago, but my pat, my grandfather, said he's a young man, a young father in the hospital, and they had to take their son. My uncle Greg was there, and he was having a lot of trouble breathing, and he's 18 months old. And they said, uh, you know, it got into pneumonia. And he was in the nursery there in the hospital and there was babies there. And um, the doctor they had had no hope for him. They, he turned to my pap and said, um, you know, I really don't expect him to make it through the night. And I can't imagine getting that diagnosis about your little baby, about your little one. And uh, they were just going to push Greg's bed to the back of the nursery and not really worry about him. They said, we don't even expect him. He's having so much trouble breathing. We, I don't know that he'll make it. And, and I think about my pap and hearing that, that terrible report from the doctor. The doctor had no hope. And, and what my pap did, he said, I turned from him and he said, and I went to the chapel at the hospital. And he said, I knelt down in that chapel and I said, Lord, I ask you to save my son. And he said, you know, I love my son. He said, do anything you can, Lord, to save my son. So that was a real demonstration for my pap. He took his faith out of the doctors in the hospital and what they could do, especially when they say there's nothing else they can do. And he put his hope in the Lord. And he went down to the chapel all by himself and he just cried out to God, save my son. And he said immediately as he turned and walked out of the chapel that there was another doctor that met him. And he said, uh, Mr. Conley, I've looked at your son's case. He said, I believe that I can put an adult size drain in each pipe. We don't really use those on babies. But in this case, I believe that we can remove that fluid quickly off of his lungs and he'll be able to breathe. Would you mind if I take over your case? And my pat said, he said, absolutely, take it. You're, you're our doctor now. And he said he went and found that other doctor that gave him no hope. And he said, he gave him a, a couple explicit words and said, you blankety blank doctor, don't ever look and touch my son again. <laughs> if you know my pat, that was really funny. Um, but, you know, he told him the business. <laughs> fired the other doctor. <laughs> so he fired the other uh, doctor. He hired the one that had hope, the one that when he cried out to the Lord, isn't that wonderful that God cares in every such, in every storm? I mean, what did my pap do? He went and let his hope be the anchor to his soul, get him right past the trouble, right through the veil, right into the presence of God, where the answer was when he walked out of the chapel, a new doctor met him and had a solution, had something to save his soul son. And overnight, they drained that fluid off. And uh, the next morning, you know, Greg began to get better and better and stronger and stronger. I just got to see my Uncle Greg last week and talk to him. And, and, you know, he's so strong and healthy. He's a walking miracle. And I always tell him, I said, I love telling that story about you and Pap and the miracle you got that night at the hospital. One time I even filmed a stick with the plan inside the chapel of a hospital just to tell the story. And it had the stained glass and it really set the setting. I I could feel, you know, when all hope is gone naturally, but yet our hope is in the Lord that no matter the storm, you feel that steadiness and you feel that strength from heaven. And so uh, that was really fun uh, to film that one there and to get that testimony out. You will love um, this one. Um, oh, is Jonathan McBride on? Is Fabian, did you answer him and say that we are going to pray for him? Praise the Lord. 
Oh, Sheila wants to pray for Jonathan. Yeah, we were just talking about Jonathan McBride this morning, and I... Uh, I want him to come back to Kentucky because he's so good at praise and worship. I know he's doing a work in Uganda. He really was miraculous in keeping Fabian and Norma here in the States and bringing uh, the best experts to help us. We are seeing miracles uh, over and over again uh, in this season. I've called it the summer of miracles. That is no lie. We had tremendous favor with the governments and the agencies that Fabian and Norma, they're here. And I got them up front Sunday and we were rejoicing. And I wanted to play that song like celebration and uh, yeah, <laughs> come on. <laughs> and we were having a party because when everybody said no and every expert said no and every lawyer said no, don't even try. You know, when everyone was saying you're going to have to go back to Columbia, we believed God. We put our trust in God. Our hope was in the Lord and it was an anchor and everything. You know, Fabiola Norman was saying everything that felt like, oh, you need to get your luggage. Oh, quick, buy your tickets, get everything in order. They said, yet we just need to believe God for our miracle. We were singing that song, you know, he made a way where there was no way. You know, he'll move the mountain and I believe I'll see him do it again. And we just kept singing that Sunday and praising God and just rejoicing like it was done. And, you know, we waited through that Monday was the holiday, July 4th. And by the Tuesday, the Lord sent the right people to us that we got a hold of the right agencies, the right level two workers that could get us to the right people and file the right papers. So it was I mean, mountains are moving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I know this one guy. I know you know him too. Abraham in Romans 4. He had to hope when it was against everything natural to hope. I mean, oh my goodness. He's old. He gets a promise. He's going to be the father of many nations. You know, how, how is that going to work? And um, yeah, I'll believe with you for Jonathan. I, I didn't finish that thought, but he's protected. We know when he left, we just plead the blood of Jesus over him, whatever he's going through today. If you're heavy on Sheila's heart, uh, we love Jonathan. He's part of Faith Church forever, whether he's in Uganda or here with us. His ministry is just protected, that his life is kept in the wonderful name of Jesus. We just plead the blood over him and he has divine favor. Whoever he comes in contact today, that he'll just have the protection of the Lord and he'll say, then he's saved because he's over there in the name of Jesus. He'll feel strength from heaven and his health and body from the top of his head to the tips of his toes. We believe God. He is whole in the name of Jesus. He's got great favor wherever he is. That's right. He is a way maker, a miracle worker. Yeah, he's doing it again and again. You all are preaching good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's always hope. That's right. Good preaching. You know, uh, Abraham, he had this promise. And if we read out of Romans 4, in verse 17, it says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and cause those things which do not exist as though they did. Means if you can't even see it, God will call it back to life again. I mentioned Sunday morning, Erica had a vision of our church, one of our dear uh, friends, that, a young adult that goes to church here. And the Lord showed her our church. And Jay and I, we were preaching. And she said, Amy, you were preaching and you begin to lay hands on people. And she said, I saw this as most vividly as I could, as I've had any other dream, as you laid hands on the people. Electricity went out of your hands into them. And she said, as she looked more closely at the people, they were dead. They looked dead. But yet it was the life of God that that surged them like an electricity. She said, you touched them and they came to life again. And, and this is really a great illustration of this very verse in Romans 4, that things that did not exist would exist. When we begin to pray, when we begin to speak life, it causes the dead things to raise in our life. It causes what looked dead, what looked impossible to come to life again and to be possible and to live and not die. And I, I shared that vision with the church on Sunday because I thought how powerful we are seeing people getting free from addictions, cancers leaving, tumors disappearing. Why? Because this life, this hope that we have in Jesus, it is like electricity. It changes things. And so uh, which um, causes, uh, let's say it gives life to the dead, causes those things which did not exist as though they did, um, who contrary to hope and hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. 
so shall your descendants be. So Abraham, when it was contrary to hope, what's that mean? When he, when he looked at his body and thought, there's no way to hope. You know, uh, he got the promise at 90 and, and didn't become a father till 100. He looked at Sarah and thought, she's old too. My wife, how, how are we going to have this baby? When it was contrary to everything natural, let's hope in the Lord. Let's, let's just hope. Let's just believe God. He gave us a word. If God's given you a word about something, no matter what the storm is, what's ever contrary, if you've got a promise, if you've got a word on it, if you've got a verse you're standing on, that's your anchor right there. That's where you you can drop your hope right there. Well, no, the Lord said by his stripes, by Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. Then there might be contrary reports. There might be things to steal your hope. There might be a diagnosis. There might be something, uh, symptoms that you feel so strong, but yet you don't have to look at your body and let it dictate to you. No, let's believe God. He said, I'm the God that heals thee. You take that and you say, okay, I'm going to stand on this word. I'm going to let that, uh, what causes the dead things in my life to come back again, that, that I, I won't have to just look to my body, but I can hope contrary to everything naturally and believe God. So when you'd say, okay, I'm going to hope anyway, hope anyway. That's right. We're hoping anyways. Amen. Hey, Mary, good to see you God. Um, we are going to, when it's contrary to everything, still hope. Verse 19 says, and we being weak in faith, he said, did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Okay. They didn't consider themselves. They were considering God. Verse 20 said, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in the faith, giving glory to God. This is a great verse because when you're tempted to waver, when everything naturally looks so hard and so awful, how are we going to believe? God? How are we going to trust God? And you begin, this is a secret I've done in my life over and over again. I just get in the car and I turn up praise and worship as loudly as I can. And I let the praise be louder than the problem. I let hope arise in my heart. I just turn out all the negative and, and I just turn it up. And I, I share this testimony a lot with you, but it's the most vivid time in my life that I can remember that this was the anchor to my soul when I felt like I was just going to get tossed away or lost in the storm. You know, we were uh, at our Giovanni's restaurant and I told you, man, you know, that was such uh, an adventure of our faith. It took everything we had to stay afloat. We thought we were doing right and getting in a business that it would bring in money and we could just build our new church building. And oh man, right in the middle of that, we just found out this, this is hard. <laughs> I felt like we got ahead of what God was doing. We, we should have stayed preaching, not making pizzas. And, um, you know, and, and the bank would call us and tell us how negative we were every day. And, you know, that's a hard way to wake up. So I was running lunch deposit money from the Giovanni's restaurant to uh, the bank. And I walked in one day and this is when, you know, I just felt like, okay, you know, I was doing all that I could. And I, I took that lunch deposit and I slid it under the window and the lady wrote down the balance and she put a negative sign real, like drew it real dark for me. And then she circled it. And she slid that balance back under the window at me. And I remember looking at it and I picked it up and I was like, oh, well, you didn't have to circle it. <laughs> and, you know, I was so uh, you know, upset because I thought, oh, you know, how could she do that? I felt like the world was falling apart. And, and I remember I, I went to my car. And I thought, you know, I, I feel Abraham here in this. When, when it was contrary to hope, when it looked like we owed every vendor, when it looked like we were losing money, you know, and all of, in every way possible. And it looked like we had missed God and could he help us? And uh, when I had all those thoughts, when it was contrary to hope, when everything looked dead, you know, I knew that God could cause things to come back to life again. And I, when it was contrary to hope, I hoped anyways. And I turned up the music as loudly as I could leaving that bank. And I remember at a prayer school CD was on and it was singing, uh, they were singing that song, Jesus is mine, Jesus is mine, everywhere I go and everywhere I be, oh Jesus is mine. And I turned it up even louder, it goes, he's mine, 
Oh yes, he's mine. He's mine. Oh yes, he's mine. There's something about that name. And I just begin to sing and I'm crying. <laughs> but what was I doing? I was letting my hope arise. I was dropping hope in that car in the middle of that storm. That was the anchor, that big heavy weight. It caused that situation to begin to shake just like those big naval ships will shake when they drop that anchor. When you drop hope in your life, that trouble can't stand. That storm has to go. That, uh, you know, uh, depressing anxiety, the tension that I felt in that situation. When I began to sing my praises, when I began to hope anyway, I was just like Abraham. I was strengthened in the faith, giving glory to God. My inner man, my spirit man began to get strong by just singing, Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. If you can get a song out of your heart in the darkest hour, <laughs> in the worst part of the storm, if you can get that song out, you will get strong on the inside. You're letting hope arise. You're letting your spirit be the leader. And it, it's so neat when, when hope gets out, when you begin to hope again and your faith gets strong, you can receive the end of that thing, the end of that problem right now before you see with your natural eyes anything changing yet. You'll just get peace in your heart like, I don't know, I was just praising God in my car and I just feel like we got the answer. You'll change and from that worry and anxiety, you'll change to just, let's just hope God. Let's just believe in God. Let's just trust God. You know, Fabian and Norma, when we were, you know, two weeks ago, it, it felt like naturally we should be stressing and crying. And, you know, I wanted to go, why God, why do they got to leave? But we just stayed in faith. We hoped anyways. We sang praises. He's going to do it again. And when we started singing, it strengthened our faith to believe God, to see that miracle. Our hope took us, you know, from, from that terrible situation. We just let hope arise, brought us right into faith. And that's where we see the miraculous take work and let God turn things around quickly in our lives. If you need something today to turn around quickly, you know, the Lord said this show up today just for you, just to stir up your faith. So as we're talking about these verses, faith is just rising in your heart as well. That these are just not miracles, my testimonies that we have to talk about. We like talking about your testimonies too. And God's right there, whether you're listening, driving in the car, you're listening, doing housework today, you're listening, you know, sitting on the sofa. The, it's no accident. The Lord wants to work and show up strong and big in your life. You can send us your prayer request. I'm going to pray with you all before we get off uh, the broadcast today. And we'll see more miracles. And I'll be preaching your testimony, <laughs> how God turned it around in your life. Praise the Lord. He is a way maker. Amen. You believe it's done. Glory to God. Hey, Rick Berger. Good to see you. He's our friend from California. I know you've told me before, Rick, what, what city are you in again? Are you north or, or southern California? We talked a little bit about San Diego, and I know Rick's told us before, but I forgot what city he's in. But uh, we're just going to hope anyways. Today. I don't care what doctors have said. I don't care what the bank account looks like. You know, when we begin to sing and praise God, even through our business situation, you know that the Lord, when it looked like no way, he sent a buyer I sent a buyer that would want to buy those restaurants. I thought, Lord, how do we even pray for a buyer? Lord, send us an idiot. Send us an idiot. <laughs> and the Lord sent us a man that uh, he, he just really believed in himself. You know, he was really cocky and sure. He said, I, I can run this, you know, better than you guys. And we said, that's right, brother. You take it. You can buy this restaurant. It's all yours. But God has a way out of that storm. Just put your hope in him today. There's, there's no mess too great. There's no trouble that he can't help you out of. He's got a way out. I like to say it like this. The Holy Spirit's never afraid of your mess. No, gets right in there with you and helps you, helps you clean it up and get out of it. Oh, you're in Santa Cruz. Rick's in Santa Cruz. That sounds nice to be there. Do you know, Matt, is that Southern California? I thought I thought, I thought it was. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, my brother Matt's been to San Diego. I haven't been to California yet, but I would like to one day. He said that was really pretty. And you were at Uncle Tim's house where you all, you said you could look across the waterway and see Tijuana. And the flag. And the, and the, flag and the arch yeah. right there. Oh. On the river. Wow. On the river, on the, 
Uh, so we have Uncle Tim and Aunt Mary Lee that used to live out there um, in San Diego, and he's retired from, he had a whole career in the Navy. We were talking about ships today and dropping our anchor of hope, so we got talking about him. And really, uh, Matt was telling me last night that Uncle Tim is so decorated officer that he um, has, um, his resume was like... <laughs> 20 pages long of all the awards and everything. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, in, in heaven, but you'll get awards for the work you've done for the Lord, that you that there'll be jackets and medals and on, on or that you'll be adorned with for your work of the Lord. Uh, that's what uh, Joe Morris always preaches. And he said he, he prayed with his dad, Joe Morris did, on his deathbed. And he said, you know, I always wonder about that. You know, my dad didn't have any time to do any work for the Lord. So he goes, I think my dad might be up there running around in a Lord cloth <laughs> you get saved in the last hour but you still make it <laughs> praise the lord um but uh yeah we we were talking about uncle tim we um matthew and i actually got to see maverick last night at the at the movies and um well, if you like Top Gun, uh, this one wasn't um, too bad. A couple of cuss words. I wish she could put a filter on it at the at the movies. But the storyline was uh, so good. I'm nostalgic about Top Gun. So <laughs> it was good to hear the music. I was like, Matt, is that Kenny Loggins song, that Highway to the Danger Zone? <laughs> but uh, but but it was good. You you get you get that feeling again. Yeah. Oh 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 yeah. Oh, sure, Mary, we'll pray for your daughter, pray for your brother-in-law, too. Oh, goodness, yeah, we'll lift him up in prayer. There's always hope, isn't there? I'm glad you all sent in your prayer request. We'll get, we'll get our prayers going. We'll stir up hope. Praise the Lord. It's good to get together with believers, you know? Man, faith changes things. You don't have to um, go through things alone. You will like uh, this verse. I was thinking about this. This is Romans 15, 13. You will love this. Now, may the God of hope, what are you talking about? Hope, the anchor of your soul. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Man, you're to abound in hope. That's, that's a lot of hope. That's just not a little to get you through the day. You got plenty of hope for tomorrow, the next week, the next year, your future, the great plans God has for you. You're abounding in hope. He is the God of all hope. I love that he wants to fill you with all joy. Not a little joy today that you're barely making it on empty and you got nothing to smile about. No, that the Lord will just remind you, even like me, even if the bank, the bank has, you know, given you a, a bad report, a bad financial statement, if you have to be like me, get in your car, shut off all the negative report, turn up the praise and worship, start declaring, you know, that you're, you're going to see a victory through all this. Raise a hallelujah right there in your car and give glory to God and get strength and in the faith. That's, that's dropping hope right there. Then let all those problems begin to shake and those doors start to open. For you, I love that, 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 that you'll be filled with all joy and peace in believing. We're believers. That's what we do. We believe. That's right. We're abounding on that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I love that verse. You should highlight that. If that's not highlighted in your Bible, let's highlight it a, a bunch of times. I think it's in two colors in mine. A yellow and a pink. <laughs> it's so good I had to highlight it twice. When... Um, when that hope goes down, you know, that anchor of our soul, that's when we start to see miracles. I, um, I love to see when people, um, you know, are getting new. They're new to the Word of God. They, they don't know, and, and they come in, and they start learning a little bit. I love how hope will change your countenance, no matter how sad things be seem, but your countenance begin to change. You know, I've been helping and counseling with some people here at church and, and I've noticed nothing's changed yet in the natural in their situation, but they have such a great hope because they've learned what God says about them and how that he loves them and, and he wants to move for them. And, and all this that we see with our eyes, it is all temporary. Oh, that the things that last that we don't see, the unseen, that's eternal. And how God is moving, he moves on what we see. He moves on this natural realm. And uh, our, our goal is just to drop that anchor of hope and to stay in faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's just stir, stir it up. I uh, see your prayer request. You can keep them 
come on my check these all day so I can keep praying for you. So even if you're watching this on a replay and you have a prayer request, I still pray for you and we're still going to see the answers. I'm going to pray that this God that we mentioned of all hope will fill you with all joy and peace, that you'll be abounding in hope in the darkest of situations. Lord, I just release this anointing on this show today, that it goes forth to our viewers that are watching and that it's no accident that they are, that they will not feel that they are in a place of no hope, that there's no way out. Lord, that we stir up the faith, Lord, that there's a gift of faith on the inside of them, that they've heard the word today, that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And as they've heard this today, as we begin to declare your word, they'll be strengthened in their spirit, man. They'll have a spirit of wisdom and revelation that they won't feel stuck in the situation that they're in right now. For those that have requested prayer in their bodies, that cancer has to go. Oh, that uh, it cannot longer stay because this God of all hope <laughs> will fill them with uh, all joy and peace so that they will be abounding in hope, not in their own might, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, that that force that raised Christ from the dead is now dwelling in our mortal bodies, quickening us, going to the area where it needs it. Someone mentioned the headache. Lord, that their head will be touched. Oh, that everyone that is, is believing for pain to go, we call a war on pain right now, and say that they'll be loosed by the power of the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank Thank you, Lord. Now, I just see in my spirit someone just like holding their head right now that your head has been hurting. Looks like you've had sinus pressures right under your eyes and that right up through your temples that there's been pain. I just see the Holy Spirit ministering to you and just loosen you from that pain right now in the name of Jesus. Woo, the God of all hope just fills you with all joy right now. That includes healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I see someone like the top of the esophagus that you've had trouble swallowing. It feels like a burning sensation. It looks like right where your throat meets the top of your chest, that there's been an irritation. And uh, the Holy Spirit's going right there. Praise the Lord to heal that, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You reveal these things to heal them quickly. In the name of Jesus, that you'll continue to restore them. There'll be no damage and they can eat and have good and complete digestion just the way you can created us to in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, Sunday morning, I saw someone with an open wound on uh, their foot, that their foot was sore. And uh, Christy York typed in online and said, Amy, that was me. You were speaking to my foot and that she received healing in her foot. Praise the Lord. Isn't it neat that the Holy Spirit just goes right? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> that the Holy Spirit goes right on the airwaves. No matter the time you're watching this, that He knows exactly what you need to get it. <clears throat> now, if you're having trouble breathing in your lungs, that infection has to go. I'm going to see someone's lungs on the top part of the lungs. It looks like there's been an irritation or something bothering you, making it hard to take a deep breath, that you've had a shallow breath, that I see the Holy Spirit just going right in that lining right there. That infection has to go in the name of Jesus. We release your healing power to flow right there so they can take deep breaths. That breath is restored in the name, in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I love the Holy Spirit because he always shows up to demonstrate the word of God. And he loves, he loves to demonstrate and prove God's word as true. Man, we don't serve a God uh, who's not moving anymore or who's dead, who we just read about. We serve a God who's alive and who wants to touch you today. Uh, Matt and I were talking about this morning over breakfast that, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit's so fresh. You don't ever have to, you know, uh, read something where it doesn't feel alive. We shouldn't ever have to go to a church service that feels like a rerun. When you get in the flow of the Holy Spirit, it is like a river. And a river is new every second. It has fresh water going. Even the ground underneath it is fresh. That we could never stand in the same place that we were last week in the river. If you tried to get back there, you know, it's new water, new ground underneath you. Everything's moving and shaking. That's why we stay in the presence of God. That's why we have rivers. Oh, the Holy Spirit on the inside of it changes us, makes us new from our head to our toes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. Hey, Joy's on from India. We are praying for your ministry and family. You're doing a great work over there, Joy. I see all the pictures of your crusades. You are a mighty man of God. Uh, Rick will pray for your wife, Mary, that she'll have a touch from the Holy Spirit, that this God of hope that we've been talking about, that she will be filled with joy and peace and abounding in hope today in her health, in her mind, spirit, soul, and body complete in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Craig Smith is on saying, oh, I like that. Let my praise be louder than my problem. <laughs> That's right, Craig. You know, if you were here, Craig, we'd let you sing about it. <laughs> Craig has one of my favorite voices. You need a Maverick City song sang. We say, Craig, get up there and sing it. Praise the Lord. He got to come a month ago here. At, he was at Faith Church and led worship on the Sunday. That was so much fun. We love it. When we get singing about the blood too, the blood, man, there's power in the blood. One time the Holy Spirit asked me, when will the blood lose its power? We know the answer. Never, never will the blood of Jesus lose its power. Praise the Lord. Uh, Sue, um, Susan. Hey, Sue, good to see you. You got a new ministry the Lord's developing in your heart. Well, we just say you're abounding in hope. You got a spirit of wisdom and revelation to walk that out. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's let our praise be louder than our problem. You crank up the praise today. Let hope arise in your house. Things start shaking right there in your home. Your kids will say, what's happening? What's going on? You'll say, we're dropping the anchor of hope. <laughs> Things are shaking and changing in the name of Jesus. I um, got a new stick with a plank going to come out for you this coming uh, Thursday. Uh, Fabian and I and the team, we were out at Pearville um, down there. I'm trying to remember what it was about. I got it. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit brought it back to me. Um, it's in my new notebook. It's the first stick of the plan in the new one. And we were out there, you know, Parable redid where their little waterway is. And we like the little brick street there and has a little uh, bridge we were filming out there. And uh, the God of miracles is coming out Thursday. We'd love that. We'll share some testimonies um, coming out on that one. And uh, so when you see that, like that, share that, you get it out to new people. You have friends I don't have that need to know about this good Jesus, this miracle working Lord that we serve. And I love hearing your testimonies. Keep them coming in. I'll keep sharing them. You want to send me a video of what God's done in your life? We'll play it because miracles produce miracles. Oh, uh, we'll be live again next Tuesday. I'm trying to think where I'll be. I'll still be in uh, Naples Tuesday because we're preaching Sunday there and Sunday night. And uh, Jay will be here. Don't worry. Faith Church Danville gets Pastor Jay on uh, Sunday morning. And and our friends are in South Africa at the uh, Faith Church Naples. So Jay and I are helping them with their church. So that's why we've been alternating. It's been so much fun. It's like we get to see revival in Florida, revival in Kentucky. You need a miracle, you get to Florida, you get Kentucky, we'll get you encounter with God and you can see that. So we'll be live again next Tuesday and I'll have Pastor Jay with me. It'll be fun. He wanted to Skype in. So <laughs> we had this Oh, I knocked it off my chair. I had my in-ear, but you know how, how much Jay loves you. He'll be sad that he missed the show. We were going to put him right on, but he is doing that funeral, so keep praying for the Grantham family and that they'll just be filled with this hope we were talking about, that we can grieve, but we don't grieve without hope. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you're with me. I'll keep looking over these prayer requests. We'll see some more miracles because of this broadcast today. I love you, and I'll see you live next week.